Please welcome CEO of Worldwide Consumer at Amazon, Jeff Wilkie. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Remars. Woo! Did you, uh, did you enjoy the presentations last night? All right, great. I thought they were terrific. Well, I'm thrilled that each of you is here uh, this week. We invited you because each of you has significant contributions to make to the conversation on AI and ML. Whether you're an astronaut, uh, AI scientist, or a CEO. And by the way, I looked through some of the titles. My favorite one was CEO and Chief Geek. You know who you are somewhere out there. Some of us have been working on AI for decades. We're only in the beginning stages of truly understanding the potential for this technology to change our lives and to help us work on some of the most important and urgent problems that humanity faces. At Amazon, we know we're one of just many voices working on this problem. So ReMars is an opportunity for us to come together, to share, and to learn from each other. Let me take a minute to introduce myself. I'm one of the other Jeffs at Amazon. More officially, I'm CEO of the worldwide consumer business. This includes Prime, Robotics, Fulfillment, Amazon Business, Amazon Go, Whole Foods, Prime Air, and of course, Amazon.com, Amazon Germany, Amazon Japan, and more. Altogether, these groups account for more than 600,000 Amazonians. We're kindred spirits. Amazon is a company founded by computer scientists and incredible coders and increasingly were propelled forward by pioneering work of AI scientists. Over the next 60 minutes, you're going to get a look at how AI has shaped Amazon. You'll see how AI guides our shopping experiences and accelerates how quickly we can get packages to customers. You'll get the latest intel on Alexa and our voice recognition efforts. And along the way, you'll see some really cool demos of new and upcoming products, and you'll get a glimpse into our future. Amazon has been a technology company from the start. It helps that our founder was a computer scientist. Uh, I grew up as a programmer, that's me. This is my Timex Sinclair 1000 computer. Anybody in the room have a Timex Sinclair 1000? Yeah! All right, so if you had one, you know it had, my version had 2K of memory. It was not useful for writing machine learning algorithms. Um, by the way, I look at this picture, and I'm guessing that Jeff already was connected to some massive storage in the cloud, and if you had one of these, uh, I had to use the tape recorder, my dad's tape recorder, in order to save data, and it wasn't very much data. Uh, the best thing I, I did with this, uh, in about 1,900 bytes, I wrote a video poker machine after vi visiting Vegas uh, with my grandparents, and uh, it hadn't helped me at all this week, unfortunately. When I first showed up at Amazon in 1999, I led our global operations team. I started to ask questions about how we decided where to place inventory and which warehouses, fulfillment centers, to assign orders to. It was especially important to get this right during our holiday season when capacity is so constrained for us. We didn't have much in the way of operations research uh, or formal applied math teams at the time. We were relying primarily on Skip. Let me explain Skip briefly. Skip is not an algorithm. Skip is a dude. <laughs> Skip Broadhead. Great guy. Skip had a model of the whole operation in his head. And when you had to rebalance the work or solve a problem, you'd walk into his office, you'd explain the situation, uh, and he could intuit exactly where we needed to go. He would figure out what we had to change, what knobs to turn, and he was usually right. But after my first holiday, I was pretty convinced that Skip was not going to scale. So in 2000, we set up an operations research team to begin to work on improving the algorithms that ran our operations. We joked that we were working on an auto-skip. OR was the right field of applied math to figure out how to minimize the cost of inventory and the cost of delivering orders from our supply chain and fulfillment networks. But even OR could only take us so far. We were on path to 200 fulfillment centers, 20 inbound cross docks, 100 sort centers, on a path to deploying more than 200,000 robots 
and simultaneously creating more than 300,000 jobs in our fulfillment centers. Our use of automation and robotics by reducing the need for our associates to walk from point to point or to push heavy loads of packages improves the safety and the productivity of those jobs, and it lets us pay higher wages. A similar approach has led to some great improvements in the customer experience on Amazon.com. Let me explain what I mean by looking at the evolution of product discovery. Product discovery was heavily based on human curation and bestsellers uh, when we started. Customers would browse selection in a physical store or online that a merchandiser chose based on intuition, data, and trends. But this method was inherently biased toward the merchandiser's own preferences. It failed to capture some niche interests like mushroom picking or board games. The very first recommendation engine that we built using collaborative filtering was considered revolutionary 20 years ago. It was an early version of a machine learning algorithm. That recommendation engine helps customers discover related items, like a camera bag or the lens for a camera that a customer had just purchased. It's still on the site, and it's still a huge help for customers. When we later combined collaborative filtering with heuristics to make recommendations, we were able to give customers personalized recommendations rather than just showing them popular items. Fast forward a few years. Add in the exponential growth of computing power provided by Amazon Web Services plus the improvement of sophisticated machine learning algorithms. And we start to get dramatically better results, on the order of two times better than a typical algorithmic improvement. That's a once in a decade leap. That helps us to personalize our content and recommend uh, goods that a customer uh, would like to buy and movies that a customer is more likely to watch. Let me explain how we achieved these goals. And it wasn't a straight line to realize the improvements. In 2012, we wanted to update our product recommendation algorithm to improve personalization for customers. We started from state-of-the-art graph clustering techniques. Then we shifted our approach under the hypothesis that deep learning methods would outperform matrix completion methods because we could take advantage of nonlinearities. But we found this approach performed worse than not only our best collaborative filtering algorithm, but just a simple bestseller, a ranked list. Then we used a, a common artificial neural network called the sparse autoencoder. But it was still not as effective as collaborative filtering or the bestseller list. In fact, we tried methods based on singular value decomposition, bilinear regression, and restricted Boltzmann machines. Nope. None of these matrix-completion-based uh, matrix, matrix methods underperformed or overperformed compared to our production algorithms and simple lists. We were surprised that the state-of-the-art methods would perform worse than a simple bestseller list. So it prompted us to take a step back and think about the objective function that we were trying to solve. We looked inside the black box to identify what was happening. I'm going to explain this in the context of Prime Video, but the same approach applies to many products on Amazon. We found that matrix completion methods learned that classic or Oscar-winning movies would be of interest to many customers. Makes sense. However, we saw that given an evening at home on a rainy Saturday, customers prefer to watch a newly released movie rather than an old movie. In other words, Captain Marvel beats Casablanca. This learning became the foundation of our winning approach. We developed a new model for recommendations using multi-layer neural networks for classification. We trained the model using a loss function for predicting what customers wanted to watch in the next week. What you see on the screen is the formulation behind the model. We took historical movies that, cust that customers were watching in order to predict the movie a customer wanted to watch next week. The neural network classifier outperformed other neural network-based approaches that are much more complicated. The simplicity of this model made it inherently more scalable, so we could expand to many millions of products and hundreds of categories across Amazon and it performed two times better than collaborative filtering. So we had a winner. After we developed machine learning technologies across Amazon, we didn't sequester our scientists in their own group, separate from the business. Instead, we embedded them in the business teams. We integrated scientists with the folks who are building our products. And like all of our businesses, 
These teams start with customers, an idea for a better customer experience or a customer-focused product, and work backward. They start with a customer experience that we'd love to deliver at launch, not the machine learning algorithm, and then evolve the approach over time. Our machine learning scientists invent for customers first, but they do get the chance to publish academic papers along the way. And one of the best parts about my job is that I get to read the abstract of every scientific paper that, uh, that we publish. Two years ago, I learned about the work our team was doing with generative adversarial networks, GANs, to uh, allow re reconstruction of fashion images in varying styles. You'll see a really cool real-world application of this technology in a few minutes. For the rest of the hour, we'll focus on three specific areas where we're deploying AI and machine learning. Uh, these, these areas are all about the customer experience in shopping, delivery, and voice. So let's stay in the shopping world for a bit. People do not shop the way they did back in 1995 when Amazon started. They don't shop the way they did in 2015. We started as a bookstore. We're now a collection of Amazon stores, including Amazon.com, Amazon Go, Whole Foods, and more. And we make it easy for customers to buy just about anything they want from virtually anywhere and have it delivered wherever and whenever they want it. Think about this challenge. When shopping for clothes, customers are often inspired by the fashion looks they see in photos, but they struggle to find styles they can't describe in words. This past April, we launched StyleSnap, which is a new feature for our iOS mobile app users. This feature lets customers shop for apparel simply by taking a screenshot of a look they like. Customers can take inspiration from magazines, websites, social media influencers, and then match the looks that they love with items that are available for sale on Amazon's store. StyleSnap uses computer vision and manifold learning to identify an apparel item and recommend similar items. When a customer uploads an image, we use deep learning for object detection to identify the various apparel items in the image and to categorize them into classes like fit and flare dresses or flannel shirts for me. We then find the most similar items, visually similar items, that are available on Amazon. We use a deep embedding model to determine visual similarity. We've trained this model to ignore the differences between catalog quality images and lifestyle images, and instead focus on the unique color, style, and pattern elements that customers are looking for. StyleSnap's deep learning approach learns to capture subtle style attributes, like the shape of a neckline or the size and pattern of polka dots uh, on a dress that would be really difficult to describe with words. StyleSnap's a great example of how we're making shopping even more intuitive. The simple customer experience that results belies the complexity of the technology underneath. So I've described how Amazon has used machine learning over the years, and then shown you some of uh, the things that we're doing to make the customer experience in Amazon stores even better. Now I'd like to introduce Dilip Kumar, who will take you on a first ever public look behind the technology and invention that powers Amazon Go. Thank <laughs> you.